Hey guys, how's it going? It's Tolton, and today playing this game called Firewatch. Someone t suggested it to me to play it, and I thought it looked pretty cool. So here we are playing the game, and I play it'll be pretty fun. Start a new game file. Summer, 9.30 p.m. The heat still radiates off the high 
desert. What do you think about kids, he says. Kids, they're not very smart or good at much. Saying if you and I had some couple little idiots. Well, uh, let's see, I guess we'll have them now or something. We should probably get married. Yeah, I'd like that, you say. Kids are gonna be screwed up enough. Probably for the best, their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. We got a red eminent man at Condom Day on our hands, folks. Okay, so I got a truck. Don't look half bad, I guess. Nice graphics. Pretty cool. Better take it easy, so have a nice relaxing trip. Well, guys, I think that the music helps the experience. But I guess I'll keep it on, you know, for this episode and tell me what you guys think about having the music in there. Maybe should have kept it off. You know, maybe we'll turn it down actually. Do subtitles. Turn down the music. Quite a bit. Got some maps telling you to check in and bear warnings. Looks pretty cool, guys. Oh, crap. Nineteen eighty. The Thursday night, Julius, four hours late. She doesn't go. You're worried and getting angry about a minute. Walks in after you've gone to bed. Not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Well, uh, maybe you're mad about it rather than that. Uh, Cause what if she was out with someone else? Or to consider it asshole. Tell you to fuck yourself and not be such a baby. Call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. Well, guys, I ain't sworn in these videos up until now. And I suppose it's because I'm reading this. So I think that's why we did it. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. Draws all the places you go. She draws you. Plays on it flex like a man. You look awesome. Pretty cool game so far. So it's like telling us a story in between us playing this game. Oh, that color's like real, uh, crazy. Oh, you can press square to sprint. Looks like there ain't nothing so far for me to pick up. Two forks, fire lookout. Eight more miles still. And it's quite the ways. I oh, you can't jump. I could just have like obstacles. Nineteen eighty-two. During the summers, you and Joey enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. Brings in folks from faraway places. A lot of them tries to mock you with a knife. Crap. Bucket gets kicked. Bebop, uh, fucked up the dog. Julia 
I yelled. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. Confront the attacker. Let's see, what the heck do we do? Scare him or do we beat him up? But this game's intense, I didn't know it's gonna be like this. Well, uh, I guess he beat him up. Beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. Cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asked to take a different path from that day forward. Say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Like crap, that's like a drama game. Playing staff kids get way laid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yeah, it was in Connecticut. Two thousand miles away. Great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. I absolutely do not. Crap, what the heck? Well, I guess you'll agree. She'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but you'll do it if you want to move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees and flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Crap. Julia sent home from here on paid leave. After having an episode, she lost it at a colleague for borrowing books that were part of her research. Didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him two days prior. So, guys, so far this game's like a lot of reading, and that's okay. I think that, like, later on, you know, it's more action y. And that's just like the intro. She's found crying in the stairwell. Well, maybe you guys should talk about it. For seeing multiple doctors and having tests. Worry Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia at age 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Here we are with the camp and stuff. Pick up the journal, see what it says. Holy crap, that's me naked. Jeez. Pockets getting older, Julia comments. It's kind of nice because it gets in less trouble around the house. Wait later, she goes back to the university. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. Drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason. Has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get to Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children, little idiots. Other days, you get a stranger pulls into bed to make love. After five minutes, goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to part in a day. She gets worse. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel to nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else. Somewhere with a 24-hour care. A home. It sits with you for a couple months. Crap, what the heck? These 
lot of big decisions to make. I will take care of her. Yes, I, like, like I said, there's lots of reading right now, but I think that, uh, you know, um, the game is like this for the most part, like, there ain't too much reading later, so if right now, you know, it don't look too good, then I think it gets a little bit more action-y, or game like where there ain't as much reading holy crap it's a, and it tears up there back impossibly hard the worst is when you get mad at her like when she tries to cook her own food can't do anything without her and she can't do anything without you When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking in too. How does got real sad? You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. Maybe, well, uh, Maybe I put a, uh, what the heck? I guess we'll put a chair in front of the door. To go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Every time you do, she learned to bartender everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1am a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. One night you stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point ten and are taken to jail for the night. Consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister in law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. And they tell you Julia's coming to live with them. You don't argue, you say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer's coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. So this is the part where I think that, you know, it's finally like gameplay rather than reading a bunch of stuff, guys. Holy crap, it's real late at night. Enter the lookout tower. Heck is that? Got a generator, some propane or something like that. Sleep forever. Sure, funny. Okay, 
episode. 